Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a dahlia flower. It's going to be uh, in acrylics, and I'll show you step by step how to do it all the way through. I'm going to be simplifying this photo. It looks very complicated, obviously, but uh, we're going to be simplifying it, making it a little bit more beginner friendly for you. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat for the live show. And if you've got questions, you can ask those in all caps, and we'll try to answer them while we're painting. All right, let's get started. Okay, so this is my reference image. Obviously, the color's a little bit off. Uh, my printer uh, is not the best. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot darker and a lot more red than we're going to make it, but... Uh, we're using a 9 by 12 inch uh, canvas panel. This is the Belgian Linen Pro canvas by Fredericks. Um, they are our canvas sponsor, so thank you to them. Really like these canvas panels because they're hard, they don't warp, and uh, they're a little bit smoother than you know your regular canvas panels, the cheaper ones that you can find. They're archival also, so they're not going to have any issues with acid or anything like that, discoloring the paint later. Um, our brushes today are going to be Princeton brushes. This is the number 12 bright, number 2 bright, number 4 filbert, number 2 round, and number 1 round. And then I've also got some smaller angles in case we need them. We've got a 3 8 inch and a quarter inch angle shader from the Velvet Touch line. Um, so thank you to Princeton for providing our brushes. Uh, they, they don't pay us, but we, we were already using their products. So <laughs> it's a win-win for everybody. <laughs> All right, let me go over the colors really quick. We've got unbleached titanium, titanium white, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red light, cadmium yellow medium, yellow oxide, phthalo green yellow shade, ultramarine blue, and burnt umber. And then this one is uh, the acrylic glazing liquid by Golden here, satin. So it's a little bit shiny. Uh, that'll just help us kind of do some of our blends. If you don't have it, you can just use water instead. Um, and all of the links to all the products that we're using are down in the description in our, our Amazon store and from thebrushguys.com. Uh, be sure to use the code Angela Fine Art for 5% off. All right. Man, you're taking my job. I know. I'm, I'm like on it today. I know. Hello, nurse. <laughs> That reminds me of when Spencer, <laughs> which one of the boys did that? I think it was Jordan. Jordan, Jordan yeah. said that to his teacher. <laughs> She's like, um. We'll, we'll get to that in the middle of the okay. show. Okay, all right. <laughs> Let's draw out our flower first. So uh, right in the middle here, if you just kind of find the center point just above it, if you did kind of a small circle that um, is about not quite the same width as uh, the top half of the canvas. So you kind of split that in half. There, there's like this center of the flower is right there. And it's kind of just a, a bunch of little petals that are sort of all folded in on themselves. Can you see that? I'm gonna do it a little bit darker so you can see it a little bit better. And then at the bottom, there's kind of a big petal here and right here that kind of curves around. Um, if you remember to put all of your point all of your petals down in towards this point right here, um, they'll all be going the right direction. With this many petals, it's easy to kind of get some going in weird directions. But you notice even these ones that are curved off the side, they turn in so that they're finally they're pointing right here. So don't ever you don't ever want a petal out here kind of pointing off in this direction and not curving into back into the center. Sometimes you'll see them kind of pointing in weird directions, but they're they're always going to be attached right here, right? So um, I'm just going to go around here and do some little zigzaggy shapes. And really, honestly, these don't have to be exactly the way the drawing does. The basic overall shape is going to be an oval. And each one of these is going to, like I said, point in towards the middle. So some of them are going to curve out this way. As we come up around the side, they're going to start turning upward like this. And there's some smaller ones that are kind of in here. I'm just going to do the outside ones first, and then that way we can kind of know where to put some of our inner ones. Because they're all going to kind of overlap one another. These ones come up like this. There's a whole slew of them kind of overlapping right in here. A few littler ones. 
ones right here. There's a big one right here. And it can help to kind of do the big ones first. That way you can kind of get your bearings on the rest of the ones that you're doing. This one, this really tall one is like right off center. And then there's a big petal that kind of cuts off and comes all the way down to that center part. There, now I'm gonna start doing some of these overlapping ones here. These ones are curving out, out. The ones right up around the center are going to be, like these ones are coming straight at us. So we're only seeing the, like this triangle shape here. And then the ones below it are curving down and we're seeing that they're shorter than the than the other ones because they're pointing more at us. So they're curving up towards us. And that'll look, that's what'll give it a little bit more realism. So even though we're not gonna be doing it fully like realistically, um, I'm not gonna be, you know, painting each individual petal in here. Uh, like we do some of the other li large flower series. It would just take too long um, to do it that way, but we are still going to want to get these shapes right and get the direction of the petals right so that um, it'll look, you know, accurate. So lots of zigzaggy shapes here. If you don't like to draw, you can always find I will have a traceable for this on my Patreon website, uh, my Patreon page. Angela, you're not listening, honey? No, I'm not. Hold on. Okay. I'll get there. If I can get the mouse to move. There you go. Try that. Thanks. Patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Falling down on a job there. I Maybe was trying more. to keep up with the comments and if there were any questions in chat. Okay. Sorry. All right. All right. Patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. One dollar a month. I don't know if I was doing my job or you were doing it. That's fine. You can do it. <laughs> take, take over. There we go. All right. So there's our basic flower shape. So not too hard. Just a lot of little zigzaggy, zigzaggy lines there. Um, and like I said, you know, kind of curving up around the side, but all of them pointing right here. That, that's what will help. All right, let me grab the, let me think of what I want to do here. I guess I'll grab this one. We'll see. So I'm going to do the background and kind of try to paint around. It's not ideal. Um, it, you could do the background gray to start with and then paint your flower on top. Um, I just didn't want that gray tone underneath my yellow part of the the flower so I'm going to do a light gray mix with the burnt umber and burnt and, and ultramarine blue ultramarine blue and burnt umber and then titanium white that makes a really pretty gray and you can make it more blue or more brown warm um, you know depending on how much of the blue or how much of the gray that you add or how much of the blue you add you know, add a little bit more blue, it'll be more of a blue-gray. Add a little bit more brown, it'll be more of a warm brown-gray. So I'm just going to kind of go in between my petals here. I'm so going over the top. You've answered the first question. What? Was the background going to stay white? No. It is not. Good I, job. I wanted to, well, I mean, I could have left it white because the photograph's white and it's really pretty with white, but I, I did want to have a little bit of color here. So we're doing it. I'm not fully mixing this gray. So there's little streaks happening. That'll help us later if we decide we need to like fill in or if we missed a spot. Um, if you kind of do it a little bit streaky to begin with, it, well, one, it kind of looks a little bit more painterly. I feel like it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye. And also... It makes makes it easier to add, you know, more colors. You don't have to have the color exactly right if your background is already a little bit kind of streaky. Um, then when you add another color to it, or you know, you have to mix this color again, and you 
don't get it exactly right, it won't make that much of a difference. It doesn't have to be the exact same color because we've got all kinds of colors going on in here. See that? So I'm just going to go over the top of my lines here just a little bit. Still leaving enough of it to see where, you know, where my petals ended. If you want to, you can draw this out on paper and then transfer it onto your canvas with transfer paper. And then after you get this done, you can tr you can retrace your lines in case you've, you know, gone over them. It's not the outside petals that I'm not as concerned with as, as it is the in inner part of the flower. I didn't want to get that gray in there because I want it to be nice and bright and yellow in the middle part of the flower. So I just felt like this gray would be kind of, we'd be fighting it to get it covered if we did it as a fully, you know, full base coat. Okay, people still want to know how do you use so little paint? Um, well, I'm adding a lot of water. So if you, you know, if you notice in between, I don't know if you've had the water cam on, but every time I'm picking up more paint, I'm, I'm dipping in my water. Um, so that, that helps. Also, this canvas is pretty smooth. If you've got a more textured canvas, it's going to take, it's going to, um, be harder to get the paint down in the cracks. And so you'll end up using a little bit more paint. Um, if, if you, uh, if you are using a more textured canvas, you can spray it with a little bit of water. Sometimes that'll help make, you know, just, just give get it a little bit moist before you start painting. And that way, um, the, the uh, paint goes on a little bit more smoothly. And then if you do have little white bits, you know, because sometimes like these, these canvases, if they have a lot of texture, you, you may not cover well in the first coat. Um, what you can do is go back through with the second coat and uh, water down your paint quite a bit. The watered, watery paint will get down in those cracks and it'll even out the color. Um, so Yeah, I was going to say, because I've noticed sometimes when I've dried the canvas for you, that it's not like 100% covered. Right. I mean, there's right. just a few little spots of white still sh showing through, but mm -hmm. then eventually they get filled in and painted over. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. All right. So that's all we're going to do. You can see I didn't, I wasn't super careful with my edges. We don't really have to be. We're going to go in with some fairly thick paint to fill in our flower petals. I'm going to grab my filbert brush this time. Filbert's a real good brush for um, flower petals, if you don't have the filbert, use a quarter in, or three, three eighths inch angle brush instead. That'll work well, and we may end up using the angle brush here later. We'll see how we, how we do here. So I'm going to start out with this yellow. I just want to add it. This is cadmium yellow medium, and I'm going to use a little bit of titanium white mixed with it. And I'm going to use it in the middle of my petals. All this middle part here is kind of glowing. So I'm just adding it as a base. It's not going to stay this bright, but we'll, we'll be putting our other colors on top. But we want this color kind of in the middle here. It's our lightest value. So and I'm trying not to cover up my lines all the way either. I'm kind of trying to sort of do this fairly lightly so that I can still see my lines. Right. And it stops about right there. It doesn't go very high. And then let's grab some of this cadmium red light. Mix some of that in, and I'm going to brush some of that over. Now this time I'm going to kind of start to try to find some of those petals and use it. Over the top. Just a little bit. I'm really kind of just barely dry brushing this. Just want a little bit of little hint of this color over the top of that yellow in some places. All right. Now I'm 
gonna grab that quinacridone magenta. I'm gonna use a little bit of this ultramarine blue and make a dark purple. And I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt umber to it just to kind of tone it down, neutralize it just a little bit. And we're gonna use that in this middle part and I'm gonna kind of outline these petals a little bit. And there's a little bit of it in between some of these so we can kind of Okay, keeping it fairly subtle. I don't want to do too much too soon. We're just kind of laying the background colors. What I'm doing is looking at what's down deep here, what these dark colors are here, and these ones down here are not dark at all. They're really light, so that's what I'm laying in, this yellow and orange-ish colors, and then these purple colors, so that when we put our petals on top, those will be there, but we won't have to you know, add those later. They're, they're, we've already got the base down and we can just worry about filling in our petals. So let's mix some of the quinacridone and the cadmium red light. Makes a really pretty red. So like a cherry red, really beautiful color. Nice and vibrant. And let me see. So I want to start from the outside in. I'm going to leave that color there. Clean out my brush. I'm going to make some pink over here. So I've got purple, orange, and I'm going to make a pink color right here. And I can add a little bit of this purple into it to neutralize it, soften it a little bit, because that purple had a little bit of that brown in it, remember? Okay, so these will be good colors to start with, and then we'll be adding a lot of white to them to get some of the lighter petals. The lighter colors will go on last, though. Right now we're going to kind of put on some of these medium and darker values. Let me go ahead and grab some of the quinacridone on its own. So I've got kind of a medium, light, mid, mid-dark, and then dark. And just having these to premix will help us. If you've got, you know, um, craft paints or something like that, you could you could use those instead and just have, you know, a few colors that are when I painted with craft paints I'd I would usually have a mid value pink, a bright pink and then a darker, you know, one so that I didn't have to mix as much. I think that that's pretty good. I might use a little bit more of the blue over here and do a little bit of more of a purpley blue version. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to smush off my brush just to kind of get all of that paint off of there because I've got all the kinds of, it's all glopped on there. And I'm going to start coming in from the outside here and just start putting in some petals. So I'm going to set, setting down my brush kind of at an angle from the side here. And I'm going to put in these far petals and you can see how we're if I want a sharper edge I can kind of use push my brush to a point flat on the palette so that I have a sharp edge here and then when I go up here I can set it down right on the edge and then and then before I kind of push down I can kind of pull it down and get a a line. If you want to, you could do this same kind of thing with a round brush instead. So, or like I said, an angle brush would work as well.
And I thought I came prepared for the show today, but I just realized I don't have any chocolate. You don't have any snacks? Oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on here. Did you find some? Where did this come from? Uh, That's my chocolate bar that Mona, I think Mona sent me that. Remember, you got one and oh, I got one. Okay. And you ate yours. That's mine. You can have it. You can have some of it. I think it was Mona sent that to us. Can't remember. That's what I was thinking, but. <laughs> That's all right. I will share since you're happy with me today. You're lucky it's still in date. <laughs> I forgot it was there, actually. <laughs> Honestly, I don't eat a lot in the studio, so I'm always, you know, doing this stuff or talking. I forget I have food in here. I have to hide it in here from you. <laughs> I know if I leave it out in the living room, it's going to get eaten. We, we still have some left that was sent to us the other day, right? Or is that all gone, No, too? that's all gone. What? The sea candy? Oh, yeah, that's, that's long gone. All right, so I'm doing red kind of towards the middle a little bit, a little bit more fiery colors down in here. my brush so that I'm not covering up all of my yellow. I still want some of that yellow to show through on some of these, so let's use a little bit of the lighter pinks down here. It's all going to look kind of like a mess at first. Um, <clears throat> it's pretty normal. It can be, you can kind of lose your way if you lose your way on this you know and you kind of get lost just kind of uh, just remember your basic shapes we can always go back in and add our lighter and darker values we want our darker colors kind of towards the center here and then our lighter values are going to come up uh, in some of our outer petals uh, you can we can always kind of clean it up and, and fix the shapes later so grab some blue on this side there's a little bit more blue a little bit more warmer stuff over here and a little bit more darker blues in the shadows on this side. A little bit more purples, I should say. And these are going to be darker than we're going to end up having. So we're kind of going with the darker version of whatever these petals are going to look like later. Just at first here. Got a question about brushes. Yeah. I would like to know, have you ever used the Princeton Elite brushes? Um, I, I'm i not sure what the what the materials are on those. I think somebody else asked me that at one point. Um, I think they were either watercolor or oil painting brushes or something. They weren't for acrylics. So I think, I think if I'm remembering right. So no, I have not. I have not. All right, so this is kind of a rainbow colors here happening, but it'll all kind of make sense hopefully eventually. That's, you get to this point in your painting and you're gonna start kind of wondering if you're doing this right. That's totally normal. So just kind of know that's sort of part of the process. It's just going to look worse before it looks better sometimes. And these first layers are usually pretty ugly. So the, 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 I call the ugly stage. Every painting has one. Sometimes they're not as ugly as others. Sometimes they're really bad. You just start thinking, <laughs> I did this all wrong. I need to just sew over this whole thing and start over. And just like, no, nope, just keep going. Just keep on going. This is, you look at mine. It looks like a hot mess, right? We're laying down our bases, our underlayers. Underlayers are 
never really make a whole lot of sense sometimes. <laughs> so a lot of times they're don't they're not at all what we're gonna end up looking like when we finish, but Yeah, she used to cover me with gesso all the time. <laughs> and then she's like, No, wait, we'll give it some more time. We'll we'll keep working on it. We'll keep working on it. Yeah. I think I can pull this together eventually. Yeah. Make something useful out of right, it. Right, exactly. I think. I'm not giving up yet. All right, so I'm coming <laughs> straight down here. I don't know why I put my stem over here. This is not where it's supposed to be at all. Just put my green in here. This is the yellow green. I added a little bit of ultramarine blue to darken it up. I'm going to go back over with the yellow oxide here. Okay, so I just checked on those brushes. Yeah. And sure enough, um, it has uh, watercolor is five out of five acrylic is zero out of five right and oil is two out of five so they're okay. not used should be used for acrylics right they're probably too soft for acrylics if they're for watercolors yeah the stiffness Water is two out of five yeah watercolors are usually um watercolor brushes are usually a lot softer a lot more water absorbent um they're just you know they just do different stuff so here we go so we got their gray filling in right there and this is where I can kind of go back in and also see where I maybe missed a spot on my canvas and kind of clean up some of these edges if I need to. So, um, do we have a date set for the uh, September Patreon? Um, yes. I haven't put it posted it yet, but... I am planning on doing it. Um, run out of white. Um, let's grab the. Oh gosh, I just stuck paint on my line. You just put paint on your line? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he was done already, honey. I think so too. I'm going to okay. put him somewhere else where he's not going to get paint on. I grabbed my white and I had that brush in my hand. And it touched, and I just got paint all over my desk over there, too. Oh, we are doing good today. That's all right. So what were you asking? Uh, oh, the, the weekend. The date. Yeah. yeah, it's like, I think the third, so or the, no, f fourth, I think. The 16th or the 23rd? 23rd, I think. 23rd, okay. Yeah. We'll I think. for that. Somewhere I, in that time frame. I haven't. It's either the 16th or the 23rd, but I think I decided the 23rd. And what we're talking about is in the uh, Because Patreon. the 16th, I'm doing the desert, so I didn't want to do something that was complicated on the same weekend. Okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. So uh, what we're talking about is that on the Patreon people, at the $10 and $5 level, there's a bonus video each month. Right. And last month, we started a... a a real, very realistic uh, portrait painting. And so part two will be in September. Right. Which is today. I know, September 1st. So, wow. I can't believe it. It's going to be Christmas tomorrow. It, that's how it works. <laughs> yep. <laughs> as soon as September hits, it's like I blink and it's Christmas. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> I'm not ready. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, we should put the decorations up. I know, yeah. <laughs> we actually got some fall stuff. We just didn't get in the attic. We just bought some new fall stuff. Yeah, We're like, it's a lot easier. So, A, do we get in the attic and get the old stuff down? Or B, let's just buy new stuff. <laughs> As we opted for B. <laughs> we are that lazy. Yep. Hey, it's all right. That was fun getting new stuff. We got light up pumpkins on our table now glass pumpkins that light up no they're pretty cool actually they are cool i'm excited to that kind of gets me in the fall frame of mind seeing those so. yeah it's like 90 some odd degrees outside I don't <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's fall <laughs> inside <laughs> oh my gosh yeah <laughs> that's that's not a joke <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so now we've got our base in here. What else do we got to do this side? Okay. So 
this is. And really, honestly, it does not matter all that much which colors you put where here. I mean, you could do this in any kind of number of rainbow colors. Doesn't matter. As long as you get these kind of values right, um, as long as you get some darker areas, and then we have some lighter colors, you know, that are going to go on top, you're going to, you're going to be just fine. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to do some of the lighter color down here. And you notice that I'm doing all these brush strokes towards the center too. So I'm not coming in and doing these brush strokes in the wrong direction. I'm always, we're always keeping in mind where these brush strokes are leading so that we, if we have any streaks and these, these petals do have, you know, some of these pretty strong ridges in here, these lines that are happening through them. So we, you know, we don't want to lose those so we can, we can create some streaks by pointing our brush strokes towards the center. And then if we have any of these kind of streaky spots, it'll look like we meant to do that, that it's just part of the flower. And Are you still using the filbert? Yep. Okay. So this is definitely the simplified version. If I was going to do this, you know, um, a little more methodically, I would go in and individually paint in each individual one. I would draw it a little bit more carefully and paint in each individual petal. Um, this is the faster version of it. A little faster, a little bit easier. All right, so now I'm going to grab that quinacridone magenta. Clean out my brush. I don't have any of the white in it. I want it fairly dark. Maybe a little touch of blue. A little bit goes a long way there. And let me switch to a smaller brush. Let me go ahead and grab the quarter inch angle brush here. I'll grab that color that I just mixed. And I'm gonna start to do some streaks. Out from the center. Remember, we said there's you know all these lines in these petals. I'm just going to add some of these streaks. So, I've got two questions. Yeah. Okay, first question I didn't know for Patreon, which is can somebody go and look at your Patreon page and see what videos you have painted in the past? I do have some that are public, so you can see. Um, I haven't done recently some of the more recent ones, but um, I usually I advertise um, what we're doing in the Facebook group. In the no, on, oh. on in the Patreon okay. on the Patreon page. So if you go, you go right now, honey, and see that you should be able to see some that are public since you're not logged into there. You should be able to see some posts that are public. I I need to make a new a new um, post that's got some of that information on it just so people can see but we've done uh, are they asking about the bonus video yeah you know before they sign up they wanted to check out right. to see what was the what bonus was videos we've done uh, we did a cornucopia last fall that is really beautiful um, and then we did a covered bridge in the winter time we have a cottage summer cottage with like a garden cottage uh, we did a row house of colorful houses. Mark even painted one of those. Um, that was a bonus bonus. Yeah, it was a bonus bonus video. Uh, what else? We did a mandarin duck, which was really detailed. Yeah. We did the hydrangea last month, which was super detailed. Yeah, that was a, that was a two two-parter. Month, mm -hmm, two part series. Uh, let me grab some green here. I'm just going to tap in some green little bits right in here around the center um, oh, I'll grab us I'll grab a couple of those we can show them at the very end okay yeah yeah I do um, 
and uh, somebody wanted to know how can you do you keep seeing the the lines even after you've already painted over everything uh, I'm looking I'm always looking at my reference I'm looking back and forth and back and forth you know so even if I'm painting I'm looking to see where that was um, so that you know I can refer back to it so I always keep my reference photo real handy and um, I think that that's one thing that um, that's a common um, mistake when you get into painting you start to focus in so much on what you're doing that you forget to look at your reference and then you can end up going astray because you're not referring back to what the original looks like enough um, and if you if you don't do that then that's why you know when you're it, in, it happens in drawing especially because you start drawing what you think you're seeing you should be seeing instead of what's actually in front of you so Are they? It's humid in here. Okay. So just adding these little lines here on my flowers. Adding some dark areas back in here. I'm going to show them at the end. Okay. Oh. This is when you did it on uh, what are some other ones? They're they're probably in that uh, box right there. Yep. Okay. And then in that pile right there down low. Yeah, I looked through all those. That one's from, no, that's not. <laughs> Never mind. I'll let Mark do that. paintings in here so maybe more who knows the Santa one? yep uh, no Santa we made public over Christmas last year he was a bonus video but we made him public we'll start with those you weren't able to find them it's like a trip down memory lane holy moly he had so many paintings over there. Oh, the birds there. The birds. That one is. Okay. I'll grab that one for you, too. Okay, got some red here. Do some red. These ones down here have a little bit more red to them. We can always kind of go back in later and add more of this if we need to. I'm trying to do as much ahead of time as possible so that when we do these upper layers, it's a little bit easier. We don't have to go back in and underneath. If you get your under layers right, then your upper layers go on really fast and it's just super easy and you finish, you know, it'll come together really fast. So we're almost there. So we've got all these really nice dark areas in here. Good little dark spots for we need it dark enough so that our lighter colors on top, when we do these upper layers, that they have something to play against. If we have it all kind of two, same, 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 then our upper layers are just going to look flat. They're not going to pop off the canvas like we want them to. Okay. What do I want to end up with? Well, this is working out pretty well, so I think I might stick with this. We'll see how it does. I actually might switch to the little bit bigger one. This is a 3 8 inch angle. I, am, I have not cleaned out my brushes. I'm not leaving them in the water because I, I'm getting most of the paint out as much as I can while I'm working. But then I'm gonna leave them setting off to the side and leave them and dip them into my water every now and then to keep them moist so that uh, they don't dry out before I want uh, to, to clean them. Because the paint gets gets trapped down in here. Whoops. It gets trapped down in the, the ferrule part. And um, it might look clean up here, but there's 
there's paint down in here. And when that dries, it will make your brushes fuzz out and then they won't ever come back together and form a good straight edge for you. So you can ruin a brush just in like one day. Um, just by not cleaning out outright. So I would, especially if you're investing in these good brushes, be sure you're cleaning them out really well. And I use soap in the palm of my hand and just soap them up and check them against a white paper towel. You can just, just test it to see. And we'll do it here. Well, this one's clean. Let's do it on this one that's not clean. You can see it'll show up like that. It, even though it looks clean on the surface there, and I've kind of cleaned it out of my water, if I press it on a paper towel, you can see that, that there's still paint trapped in the middle. So, um, brush tip for the day. There, there you go. That was free. <laughs> it's all free, isn't it? <laughs> Wait a minute. Shh, don't tell them. <laughs> all right, so now I'm going to make a really light valued pink. I'm going to use a little bit of this um, glazing medium. It'll just help it go on a little bit more smoothly for me. I'm going to start creating my outer petals and I'm going to start from the outside in, work my way in so that my uh, middle layers are overlapping my outer layers. I'll take my paper towel and just kind of wipe off the extra so I don't have it globbed on there where I don't want it. I'm going to start. Eh, it's a little too light. brush maybe a little bit too big. There we go. That's better. So start adding these streaks, streaking in from the middle, and then I'm going to creating some of these petals. I'm outlining them. even quieter. I know. know. Air conditioner turned off. <laughs> so we'll say hi and thanks to everybody for joining yeah. us today. We're 40 minutes into this, so might as well say hello. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple late than never. Yeah, we've had a couple of people in chat who said they found you today and they awesome. were actually one person said they were thinking about painting the Dahlia and found you on YouTube. Awesome. So yeah. Well very cool. If you haven't already anybody if you Hit the subscribe button. Check out Angela's channel. Hundreds of videos, painting. Yes. Different levels, beginner, children's levels, more advanced, all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Really cool. Many different topics. Animals, birds, insects, mostly flowers, some people every now and then. We even have Not a all, little landscapes. Mm -hmm. We even have a papal. <laughs> How many people out there can say they've painted we, a papal? We haven't done. Uh, we haven't done a lot of buildings. I don't really particularly like painting like architecture. That's just my own preference. So that's okay. It's your show. I know. I'm you just can, thinking of what we paint painted. What I'm just thinking of the themes here. Just, okay, so I've got a medium color here. I'm just kind of going in and. It's still light, but it's not quite as light as this. I'm just going to kind of go over the top of this, like any of these lighter ones that seem like they're a little bit bright or they need to, like, you know, uh, need a transition into the darker areas a little bit. All right, so there's one big one that's right here. Let's do it right here. Right here, right here. You can see where I'm, I, you know, I'm not exactly doing the drawing anymore or the painting, you know, 
Exactly. I'm just kind of trying to see where I can fit these petals in. But since we did all these lines going the right way, we can kind of fudge it and, you know, create our own things that are happening here. And we've got all these beautiful colors happening on the inside that's creating all this really interesting drama and such. Okay, so I'm kind of just doing these light outlining brush strokes, trying to find where these petals are, define them just a little bit. Some of them are, are still fairly dark, so I don't need to put this light color all the way into the middle. I don't want to really cover up a lot of this middle part. In the middle part, I'm going to use a little bit of the middle value colors that I have to define some of these petals down in here a little bit better. So I'm going to go over this one and this one and kind of give it a little transition by just adding some of the darker color over the top and you can tell the ones that need it you know some of them will just look a little bit like too out of place or whatever but we can also kind of put these lines in them leading down toward the middle and that will create the look of those petals they don't have to be fully blended in. It's starting to come together. So let's do some of the ones up here. Again, I was kind of pointing these down toward the middle. They're all leading down into the center. So let's put in some of the the center. I'm gonna to have to use a smaller brush, so I'll save that for later. And these light colors will dry a little bit dark, so they'll go on. They'll go on light looking, and then um, as they dry, they'll darken up. So you may need a couple layer. We'll definitely need a couple layers of these lighter colors to before they're as dark as we want, or, or as bright as we want them to be. I should say. I'm keeping that bright color on the outside edge of the petal. It's getting darker towards the middle. So these are curving down. Okay, it's starting to come together. It's looking pretty good. Definitely stylized, you know, not super ultra realistic, but I, I think we're getting that feeling of the dahlia, you know, at least. It's a little bit more painterly version. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm liking it. I'm happy. I like it when, uh, well, you know, obviously I don't get to, I don't paint these ahead of time anymore for my arms reasons. My <laughs> My arm, my elbow was giving me issues in the fall and spring last year, or this year and fall last year, spring, mm -hmm. about f five months of... Yeah, you took a few weeks off. I did. I took Tuesdays off for three months and 
did physical therapy and all kinds of stuff. So I have to kind of baby my arm now because it's better, but it's not, you know, it's never going to, I don't trust it. So we just are still trying to kind of keep it, keep to the bare minimum that we have to do. So we don't do the, <laughs> we don't do these videos, uh, the pictures ahead of time. I have a picture in mind. I have, you know, I try to figure it out in my brain what, it, what, how I'm going to paint it and hope, hope for the best. That's <laughs> pretty much what we do. We go in with our fingers crossed. <laughs> So I'm always happy when we get to this point of the painting and it starts to look like kind of like what I would hope had hoped for. So, well, we're it's like we there. said before. I mean, people get to see you think it through. Yeah, you know, it's, true. it's not scripted. It's not like okay, I, I did this first and I'll do this second. Right. You know, you're just figuring it out. And somebody accused you earlier of having X-ray vision and what? being being able to see all the underlayers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so. That just comes with the uh, time and experience, you know. So you you don't have X-ray vision. I don't. I don't. That rumor is not true. Is not true. Okay, <laughs> just want to make sure. <laughs> but you do have those mom eyes in the back of your head. I do have those, so that might have contributed. <laughs> might <laughs> might have contributed. I had I had a head start. <laughs> That's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> All right, so I darkened up this center with a little bit of the pink, too. I noticed it was still a little bit too bright, so I'm going in now with some brush strokes. Now these ones are all kind of converging to the center here, and then there's these bigger ones that are sort of overlapping here and here. They're kind of cupping it on the outside. That. Yeah, I zoomed in tight okay. for that. Thanks. And then this one here is just a little triangle. So I'm just going to paint it in there. And the bottom of it is still kind of dark, so I'm going to take the dark color and kind of pull up a little bit right there. There's another one right here that's just sort of a part of a petal. And then another one right here that's a part of a petal. It's going down into here. And this is fairly dark in here, so I'm going to put it in, but then I'm going to darken up right in here with that darker color. Same thing on this one. And what I can do, since this one's kind of disappearing into the petal behind it, I'm going to define it a little bit better on the top. And then I'm going to go in underneath it with my dark quinacridone, maybe a little bit of blue, really dark, and just go in here and darken up this area underneath it. We can do a little bit right here too. All these little areas in here are going to be really dark. So now that we kind of know where we want to put these petals, we can go in and kind of shape this out a little bit and add some of these darker colors back in if we lost them. That immediately will pull that petal forward. Okay. I'm going to grab some of the yellow. I'm going to add back in some yellow in a couple of these. And 
And if it's going on too thick, you can always kind of um, go back in later with your pink. And go over it and bring it back down. All right, but we're getting close, closer. Keep working our way down. And I do want to add a little bit of this yellow to some of these petals up here too. Especially kind of where they're getting close to the center. There's some over here that are actually kind of purpley colored, so I'm going to use the blue with the quinacridone and that light color. There we go. Create kind of a blue violet. I'm going to use a little bit of it up here. And then down here, let's see, where was I? Right here. There's a big petal that comes up here. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. Adding a little bit of blue, we're not really changing the value any, right? We're we're still in that kind of dark, or that kind of you know lighter lighter value color here. We we're not you know as dark as these colors down in here, but just adding that blue makes it look like it's shadowed. I'll add a little bit right there. I think there's one that we kind of missed right in here. I was thinking that I was counting them and it looked like you missed one in there. <laughs> Were you? Mm -hmm. Were you really? No. Okay. No. <laughs> All right. I'm getting really quiet because I'm thinking. I know. I like to whisper. <laughs> I didn't have any chocolate. I, I haven't eaten Angela's chocolate, everybody, so... You didn't? No. You can eat it. I, did, I told no, you you no, could. No, 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 You made me feel guilty. Oh, stop. <laughs> I, eat, I eat more than my share of the C's candy, I think, so... You have my full permission. Eat away. You're... I have to pay you somehow, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Okay. <laughs> Talk me into it He's here. Grabbing it. He's grabbing the candy, folks. I'll turn off my microphone, too. Thanks. Mm. All right. So I'm just going back in now and adding a little bit brighter highlights to some of these. I still need to work my way around this side of here. Still haven't quite gone all the way around yet. So this one has a petal that comes out right here on top. And we can outline it a little bit. Let's turn 
Oh, kind of cool. It's like little rainbow colors. There are all, all these kind of colors going on in there. Just painting what I'm seeing. We're probably exaggerating the paint colors <laughs> quite a bit. They're probably a lot more subtle than this, but it's more fun this way. So. <laughs> What was that quote we saw yesterday? What? What was that Bob Ross quote we saw? Paint. About something paint about, the world your way or something like that. Yeah, or don't feel guilty or... Never uh, make excuses for your art. Yeah. Yeah. Never make excuses for your art. That's right. Especially if it's foot art. <laughs> Nobody's going to know what you're talking about, hon. Oh, yeah. we got a lot of irregulars in here. That's true. we got the unusual I say suspects. Nobody, I should say. The new folks won't know what you're talking about. All right. And then there's some petals here that I kind of missed that are sort of underneath coming off. So I'm going to go ahead and put that one in and... Sort of. There we go. So pretty. Okay. I can. Oh, I can stand it. All right. That better. <sighs> I had to get that one out. Yeah, you've been holding that in this whole I time, been huh? Holding it in. Okay. So this one is curving like this. Big petal right here. And not all of them are going to look like they're pointed because some of these ones, like this one, are facing us. So even if you've got, you know, a petal that's pointed, as you turn it towards yourself, it's going to look more like a straight line or more blunted. So this one's probably, the point is right here facing us, but it looks more squared off just because of the direction that it's facing us. Okay. There's one in here that I missed all together. Somebody just reminded me about the, the comment, so. The what? The comment we made at the very beginning. About? <clears throat> so, years and years and years ago, we're talking 20 years ago, there's a, a cartoon. Oh, right. So, the Animaniacs. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they, would, they would say, hello, nurse. When they'd see a cute woman. Well, yeah, when they see a female character. On there, and Cat so calling, which is totally inappropriate and on PC. So exactly, don't do it. Don't do that. We're not condoning that behavior. Right. But <laughs> I started doing it when I saw Angela. Right. Hello, nurse. So the our older boys they were in school, you know, like kindergarten, first grade, something like that, and we went in for kind of a parents conference or meet or yeah. something, and <laughs> and the teacher was like, oh, so you're a nurse. <laughs> To Angela, and she's like, uh, no. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, you know, you know, your son said that you were a nurse. And it's like, <laughs> At first, we couldn't figure out where he got that from, but then, but then we realized. <laughs> you got to be careful what you say around kids. Yep. Fortunately, he didn't have a clue what it would, you know, what, what you were doing. So, it's hilarious. Yeah, so that's become a family inside joke. Mark. Still not a nurse. Nope. Man, Mark still, but I still makes inappropriate comments. <laughs> <laughs> only to the appropriate people. That's exactly right. That's the only way to do it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> it was awkward telling the teacher about yeah. why. <laughs> to, it's like, um, yeah, no, um, <laughs> uh, we're, so, yeah. we're just immature. <laughs> grow up yeah and if you like that story hit the thumbs up there you go give us a thumbs up <laughs> for that come on hey yeah uh, somebody said that they ordered the lion leggings Ooh, i can't yeah. wait so we have a i can't wait to see them angela has a teespring store down below the video there's a link and you can purchase i mixed shirts. the quinacridone with the with the yellow here so this is the color sorry shirts and things like that yeah and uh, she added the lion to the to the list. Yeah. So there's pillow. Somebody ordered a pillow too. Pillow. Nice. The leggings are cool. I want yeah, the leggings actually, too. Yeah. They're. I want them too. They have <laughs> they have a lion on. It's just a lion face along one leg, and the other leg is black. Mm -hmm. And I would rock. I don't know. Those. You totally would rock those. I should get them for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there. I mean, even the uh, the phone case looked pretty sweet I know. too. It it just the I guess the way it was centered and um, being being on the portrait, you know, it just it worked really well. It centered up really well on a lot of different products, so I was very happy. So that's the first new thing that we've added to our Teespring store in a long time. So. If you liked the lion, it's actually kind of, I thought about the boys ordering them t-shirts. I think they would wear them, you know, it's like a lot of my flat, my paintings are flowery and stuff. Not really guy appropriate, but I think they would totally wear the lion stuff. Yep. And it's I've been, good for both men and women. That's what I'm saying. Yep. I've been wearing my stick man t-shirt all day long. Yeah. Went out shopping in it. <laughs> All right, getting towards the end here, so about an hour, not too bad. Really, this has been come together pretty quick, thankfully. Because if I had done it the other way, this could have been like a three plus hour painting, I think. But it's actually not too bad. I mean, it's still looking fairly realistic, so I'm happy with doing it the shortcut way. It's kind of save some time and not having to paint in into each individual petal so carefully. Right. So we finally watched the Avengers, and I'm not happy oh, yeah. with them at all. <laughs> I'm not speaking to them till the next. They better make it right the next movie. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I we, won't give it away. We, but we even stayed to the well since it was on Netflix or whatever. We were able to fast forward right. through all the credits and see the very end. Yeah, it was it was rented. Yeah, all so rented. Netflix. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, they they got some explaining to do. Yeah, I'm they not happy with fixing them. Fixing some stuff up there. Mm -hmm. so, all right, I'm, that's all I'm going to say about that. We're only like five months late on that whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we watched it so late. We are so cutting edge. I know. Okay, so let's define these petals right here. So there's one that kind of spans right here. It goes from here. And this way. And then there's another one. Right here. It comes in there. Well, it actually comes in all the way to here. And down this way. These two actually kind of meet right here and here. Okay. There's 
another petal that goes right there. And these are not a, there's a lot of petals here that kind of overlap each other. close to the end here. Now I'm going to just kind of go back in with the dark, go in underneath some of these that kind of lost their shape, right? I'm going to just shape around some of these and add these darker areas back in where I need to define them a little bit better. Okay, they want to know how do you define the new petals like that? Just crazy good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's sweet. Well, it's all dark, light and dark. You know, it really is. You just have to kind of look at the dark and lights and you know, make sure that you're getting the getting enough contrast between the layers. So I'm going to add a little bit of this blue to the tip on these ones. Sounds like Mo sounds like Mona has to watch the whole Avengers. Seri oh, she hasn't seen them all. all. Oh, she's yeah. in for a treat. She needs to. If she likes, you know, you gotta like comic book, you know, movies like the Spider, you know, Spider Man and Superman and all those. If you I, like them, then I, I thought it was a prerequisite to being a mod to the channel. That's true. That it should be in Star Wars and Monty Python and Monty Python. Yep. We need to be, we need to be screening our mods a little bit better. Uh, I, I, I guess so. <laughs> well, she did send chocolate, so. So she has she, it out. She, she kind of has some, like, protection chocolate. Right, exactly. She's got an automatic in just from the chocolate factor. Okay. doing Going in with the red here. Just going to bring out those red tones in the center. I still want these this darker right here, so I'm gonna clean out my brush. Now that this is dry up here, I can add, I can just add a wash. I'm gonna use a little bit of glazing liquid with this red quinacridone magenta, and I'm just gonna wash up over the bottoms of some of these that are a little bit bright, maybe. Darken the shadows behind other petals in between. Help define some things. Change the tint a little bit. So grabbing that cadmium red light and the quinacridone. I'm just going to go in here and add more of these reds in here. This is just where I'm kind of adding little extra details. And we could have ended, you know, two steps ago once we added the light highlights. I'm going to get my smaller brush now. I'm going to get the number one round. And I'm going to use it to. Put in some 
Just strategic brush strokes. Really didn't use the the cadmium or the unbleached titanium today. Mm. We can use a little bit of that with the yellow here. I'm just going to use it to create some streaks here in my petals. Just adding back in these lighter areas in here. Some of the glow onto some of these petals. Oh, it's so pretty. It actually is a really pretty flower. Somebody suggested this might be a good one for a pillow. I think it would. Yeah, I I really want to do a whole series of the large flowers for pillows. I think they would all, you know, like I could see a, you know, the, I think the poppy is available on a pillow already. you to know that you're amazing as usual. Oh, Thank you guys. Make me feel sweet. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can't believe we got this done in an hour and 15 minutes or whatever it is this that's good for me <laughs> yeah i'm not i'm not the fastest of painters <laughs> usually i need to i need to think it through this way more often and do the easy shorter versions easier shortcut versions of things okay so i'm gonna grab some of this blue and the white light color it's got a little bit of yellow in it, but it, it's not going to hurt anything. I'll grab a little bit more of this pink. There we go. And add a little bit of it up here. So now that we've got our first layer of the highlights on, I'm just going to go punch up some of these highlights in here that you know need a little bit more brightness. Pull these petals forward even more than they already are. Just an extra layer of highlights really make a difference. showing up over here against this background I'm gonna go ahead and put in some darker color around the outside and then, and then some of my lighter color right up against that edge but not quite over that that dark color
I think it helps too that these petals, these this flower, you know, these petals are particularly kind of streaked. So it makes it a little bit easier to do this kind of technique where you're just kind of layering these random brush strokes over the top. You don't have to blend everything in. It definitely makes it a lot easier to get this kind of layered effect without having to do those soft blends from one color to the other. That's what kind of slows you down and takes time sometimes, you know, if we have to get a clean blend between two colors. But this time, you know, we can just kind of lay these brush strokes over the top. And I'm setting my brush down, I mean, I'll go a little slower here, but I'm setting my brush down and flicking. I'm not dragging it along the edge of the, the petal and that allows it to, let's do it over here on this one. So setting my brush down and just doing a flicking motion. Instead of, if I was to pull a line, it would, it would only lift until I lifted my brush up. But this way, I have just the very tip of it showing, so when I pull it towards myself, it's going to automatically give you this beautiful tapered finish because your hand's doing the work. You know, the brush is just on this kind of pivot point, and then you can get these kind of lovely thinned out lines without doing a whole lot of work. You're just kind of setting it down. Where you want the brightest color to be and then letting that brush flick and create that shape that you're going to you can do it the opposite direction too so all right what do you think honey you think that's bright enough it looks pretty cool it's all right cool. saw it yeah so, yeah so, so, so you want to try it again <laughs> no, I'm good. Okay. Um, what what are we doing next week? Next week we're gonna do the Lavender Girl on on Saturday. So oh. I'm looking forward to that. So it's a follow up to the girl, the Runaway Bride series we're doing. The women in white dresses in fields of flowers. Talking on their cell phones. Yeah. Uh, well, this one's oh. just kind of touching the flowers. She's got her hands down. Okay, like where did my phone go? Right. I can hear it ringing. I dropped. <laughs> I dropped it. We, you can make your own narrative, <laughs> but it's it's gonna be next Saturday, Tuesday. What are we doing Tuesday? Oh, we're doing the black and white flowers on Tuesday, so that'll be fun. That'll be another. And then. And I think after that is the desert. Is that right? Uh, let me following check your Tuesday schedule. Or following Saturday is the desert. Oh, I don't know. I can't believe it's already September. It's just... All right. So the black and white flowers is on the 4th. Right. The woman in the lavender is the 8th. Then the 11th is uh, moonlight butterflies acrylic painting. That one might change. We may move that to a different date. We'll see. And then the 15th is the desert. Uh, right. Okay. That's what I was thinking. All right, guys. I'm going to call that good. Let me give it a signature here. Ooh, we got some super chats. Nice. We got one. Nice. All the chat was awesome, but one was super. <laughs> and you grabbed those paintings too for the. Uh, oh yeah. For the Patreon there. So okay. this one was from Sandy. It says thanks for laughing at my sick jokes, and of course <laughs> thank you for a dy dynamic duo for another great tutorial. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. That's awesome. Um, turn off or get rid of the palette cam there. I'm gonna try here. 
So we've got the the birds, the hydrangea, the duck. Okay, this is for people wondering what's going on on the I don't Patreon. Know what this one. That's not in there. That was regular. That's right. regular. Well, they were. I just stacked them over there. So. Okay. No. Well, where's the? Oh, you didn't find them all. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, and then that one was in the Facebook group. So the so. Patreon only Facebook group. And then the Facebook group is working on this one right now. So we're halfway through. We got an. We're gonna do two months on this yeah, one. That's so. the ten dollar level. Yes, ten dollar level, ten dollar level, and then these are the. Five or ten dollars. Just a few of the more recent ones that we've done in the. For the bonus videos. But uh, I wish you'd found the, the cornucopia one. I wanted to show that one. Hmm. With fall coming up. I'll see if I can find it if you want to keep talking. Okay. You show the faith. Oh, yeah, I can show the faith. How big was the cornucopia? I think it was the same size as those. I think it was in that box there. In this box? Uh huh. So there's a face. She's in uh, her ugly stage. So she needs to, we basically just got down her first layers here. We're going to be working on, um, you know, darkening up some of the values in here. We're obviously putting in some eyelashes will help and eyebrows. <laughs> and, uh, you know, working on the, the lips are close. Uh, the nose definitely needs a lot of work. Um, and the hair, obviously. And then she's going to have some flowers at the top of her head. So um, this was our first month this was two hours on this it was a 12 by 12 inch canvas because a little bit bigger than you know normal size and then we'll um Where's this one yeah that's one just one of the ones we did last winter so. okay. yeah well it's in the notebook We've got a notebook there. Jellyfish. Hold on. Tractor. I think we're. Tiger? The tiger? No. Alright, never mind. We'll show you next time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I can, I'll, I'll post it on Patreon. I'll post a picture on Patreon of all the bonus videos that are available. I'll make a little thumbnail of all of them and you guys can see see then so all right so let's show our finished painting for today there you go all right thanks guys we'll see you next time <laughs> bye